Pleasant Garden is an artistic indie puzzle game that turns your world upside down over and over again. You're dropped into a world of twisting staircases and grand architectural structures that you need to puzzle your way through. And how better to navigate your way through an MC Escher style world than by manipulating gravity? Approach a surface and press spacebar and that surface is now the floor, allowing you to walk up walls. Although, would you still call it a wall if it's now the floor? Uh, a philosophical question for the ages. This ability also gives you the tools to solve various puzzles, most of which involve moving around cubes. Each will have a colour and their own gravity that they maintain. So when you put them on the floor and then spin the world, that cube is now stuck to the wall. A cube also can't be moved unless you're standing on the same surface as it, making for some fun lateral thinking. You'll need to use this to your advantage to move cubes to their cradles and unlock doors. There's a number of different puzzle types, but they all essentially use this changing gravity mechanic in their solutions, and the puzzles are pretty satisfying. I like how they're often contained to one area, because I like being able to focus and hone in on a single problem. This is where the game is at its best. It has that good feeling of stepping back, taking stock of what's available to you, and putting your mind to it to solve it. It is puzzle bliss. But spinning the world around, especially in the more open areas, can get pretty topsy-turvy. I often found myself disoriented and lost, not knowing where to go next. To me, this was the most frustrating part of the game, and Will agrees with me. That is one of the biggest issues with this game. I don't know where anywhere is. It's relatively easy to get stuck and there's no jump button to help you out. Instead, you'll need to change gravity, but this often means you just fall off the edge. Luckily, the world is made of structures that repeat themselves infinitely, meaning you can just drop roughly back where you were and continue. However, it's entirely possible for your cube to hit the floor on the way down, causing you to lose it. My cube! I needed that! Where did it go? Oh, there it is. I'll just make my way over and grab it. Grab it! Come here! Oh. Missed again. Ah! Oh, got him. Falling off can be really disorienting, and to me, the puzzles weren't quite satisfying enough to offset how frustrated I was at navigating this world. I was constantly falling off, getting lost, and just generally spending ages walking around searching for what to do next. I think this could be enjoyable if you're into the visual style, but I just wasn't. The lines defining structures are too thin, making it hard to tell what you're looking at. There isn't enough clarity between surfaces, especially once you're up close, and the limited colour palette adds to the confusion, with areas blending into one another. There is some shading, but not really any shadows, which makes it really difficult to see 3D shapes, and then to know which surface you need to turn into floor. So much of this game feels pinned on the kaleidoscopic art and infinite world, and the sense of wonder and meditation that can bring. It's very much an arty game, which, like art, means it's rather subjective. If you enjoy gazing into endlessly repeating geometric landscapes, then you'll enjoy the mind-warbling environments as you wander through with a sense of awe. But I didn't like it. In fact, it made it hard for me to enjoy the otherwise solid puzzles. And I'm all about the puzzles. So I'm giving Manifold Garden 3 out of 5 rubber chickens. <laughs>